uh, it's a good morning that we want to praise our God. He deserves all the glory and he deserves all the honor. And so when you are praising Lord, make sure you are praising with all your heart, with gladness. Amen. Just swing your body and clap your hands to the Lord. Something today in the house of the Lord.
You are Yahweh. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the bright and the morning star. You are the mighty man of war. We lift your name on high this morning. 
we exalt you king of kings lord of hosts we exalt your holy and mighty name we bow before you this morning oh god we worship your name this morning thank you precious jesus for your love and kindness thank you lord for your mercies that are new every morning it were not for you jehovah could not be here oh god we are so much grateful oh god and humbled jehovah for giving us yet another day oh lord we do not take it for granted my father we pray that your good and your perfect will may be done in our lives oh god as we keep on surrendering unto thee oh god we you show yourself strong my father we use us lord as your vessels oh god we are your servants oh god king of kings and lord of lord we need you oh god have your way my father have your way precious jesus i thank you lord even for the word that we are about to receive oh god Thank you because of the minister oh God thank you because you have prepared your servant my God as your word is being delivered oh God we pray that we may open our inner ears oh God that we may open our hearts oh God may your word find a place in our hearts oh God may we not just be hearers but also doers of your word we humble ourselves before thee oh God may you do what only you can do have your way oh God in the name of Jesus Christ I do pray trust and believe God Praise God again. I'm Mr. Mwangi. Our reading for today it is the book in the book of Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1 up to 12. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1 up to 12. And I will read. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with a with the sun with the with a moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head she was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth verse three, the another sign appeared in heaven an enormous red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns on his head he still swept a third of of the star of out of the sky and flung them to the earth The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might deliver her child the moment it was born she gave birth to a son a male child who will rule all the nation with an iron scepter and her child was snatched up to God and and to his throne the woman fled into the desert to praise prepared for her by God where she might be taken a care of 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 to be taken to be taken a care of for 1260 days and there was a war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven the great dragon was held down and the Ancient spent called the devil on Satan who led the whole, the whole world as he was head to the earth and his angels with him then 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 i heard a loud voice in heaven say now have come to the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our god and the authority of his christ for the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our god and our god and day and night has been held down the overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word by the word of the testimony they did not love their life so much as so i as, as to shrink from death they are for rejoice your heaven and you who dwell in them but all the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you he he is filled with fear because he knows that his time is short that is the word of the lord Thanks be to God. Thank you Esther for reading. Well, no disses. For a few minutes, I promise to obey all the other protocols. I'll keep distance and I have already sanitized. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. My name is Jaoge Shia. The Lord is my personal savior. Today we have read the reading from Revelation chapter number 12 verses number 1 to number 
The other readings which were set for today were Psalms 119, verse number 65 to 88, and the book of Isaiah 44, chapter number 24, chapter number 44, verse 24, to chapter number 45, verse number 8. The topic for today is knowing the enemy. The topic which we are going to learn about in a few minutes is knowing the enemy. And all of us, we have once in a while come across enemies in our lives because enemies are everywhere. And today we would like to know who this enemy whom we are going to discuss is. We want to know who the enemy is. We also want to know how he looks like. We want also to know why he is the enemy and also know why should we know our enemy. We would like also to know the weapons our enemy is using and what harm the enemy whom we are going to learn about brings to us. And finally, we also know how to conquer this enemy. From that chapter, or from the text we read today, the text is divided into two. The first six verses are telling us about this great enemy who is fighting us all the times. Whereas the second part, verse number seven to verse number 12, is telling us victory over this enemy. And this is where we learn about the few characters in this text. We are told about a woman. We are told about the sun. We are told about the moon. We are told of a child who was being born. We are also told about the dragon. And this enemy whom we are learning today is the dragon. And the dragon is given other names in the text. He is called the devil. He is called the serpent. He is called the satan. He is called the evil. He is called the father of all rise. Those are some of the words which we have learned today. And then we learn that this enemy, there was great war. And the war was between the demonic forces and the forces of the age. The ejolic forces or the forces from the God side. And then on the other end, we have the forces of the Satan. We are going to learn two things. And one of the things is that the enemy Satan is very dangerous. That is the bad news we are going to learn today. That we have an enemy who is extremely dangerous. Then at the same time, we are going to learn the good news. That this dangerous and extreme dangerous enemy is defeated. Let us start with the dangerous part of it. We start with the bad news. The bad news says that Satan is extremely dangerous. And that is why sometimes when we sing, and we always sing, it's a common song, which we say, Shetani Akija zote tuko tayari. Akija bere yako kanyaga. Akija nyuma yako kanyaga. In the real sense, Shetani is not there to be kanyagod by us. He is more stronger than sometimes what we think about. What are the evidences? The Bible calls him a dragon. In Kiswahili, they call him Joka Kubwa, a big snake. He has ten horns. He has seven heads. And he has a big tail which he swings and sweeps a third of the stars. And in verse number 12, we are told, Woe unto you, because when he comes, he can easily torment us. His work is to destroy people. His original work at the beginning was to destroy Jesus Christ. That's where we are told that he was waiting for the child to be born so that he could take him and kill him. That is what he was doing at the beginning. And if that person was there to kill Jesus, that means this person is very dangerous because he wants to kill or to derail the plan of God. He is also there to destroy God's people. That is how dangerous he is. What forces does he use? One, we are told that he is a deceiver. He lies or leads people astray. He tried Jesus in the wilderness. He deceived Eve in the garden of Eden. He keeps on deceiving people online to us. And that is why in John 8, chapter, verse number 44, Jesus calls him the father of all lies. He is very persuasive, just like a salesman or a saleswoman. He pushes us and deceives us to get into evil. 
Number two, he is an accuser. He is ever there accusing us day and night. Day and night, the devil keeps on accusing us. So that we lose the focus and we stop being effective and productive in God's work. Anytime you are accused, your esteem goes down. This is what the Satan keeps on telling us. He keeps on accusing us, reminding us about the past, reminding about all those things we have ever done so that we fail to move on. So, this also, our Satan keeps on attacking God's people. Each and every time we find him attacking, attacking. And that is why the Peter says, the devil rooms allowed like a roaring lion, seeking for somebody to devour. That is his major work, looking, moving loud, trying to kill us. That is how dangerous the devil is. The second part is the good news. This dangerous man is defeated. The devil is defeated. He lost the battle in heaven and he was thrown here on earth. And when he wanted to kill the child, the child was taken away by God to safety. The woman escaped into the wilderness for a safe place prepared by God. Satan is, was not as strong as the angels because he are told in verse number 9 the great dragon was drawn down. He was defeated and he was drawn down. And that is why we are told to rejoice. We are told to rejoice because though he is dangerous, he is defeated. He is dangerous but defeated. And how was he defeated? We are given that in our verse number 11. He was defeated by the blood of Jesus. Verse number 11 says this. Let us read. It says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much so to shrink from death. Those are the three things which made the devil lose the war. Those are the three things which made us victory. Victors in this journey. The blood of of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. And it says this, they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. When the death of Christ on the cross meant two things. One, it meant how much God valued us. We have great value. That is what the blood of Jesus on the cross says. Blood, how much value we have. And the second thing is that anything that could separate us from God was removed. So we are very valuable people. And everything which could separate us from our God was removed. Today, why are we getting depressed? We are claiming nobody loves us. We are claiming that life is worthless. We are claiming that we are not successful. We are claiming that we cannot move on. It's only we forget that one fact. That we are so valuable in the eyes of God. And God has something beautiful for us. And God has good plans for us. Plans for prosperity and all those other good things. Number two, we ask ourselves, why are we there suffering with guilt? It is because we have forgotten what Jesus did on the cross. Because he says that, your sin is as far as east from the west. As far as east from the west. Then why do we keep, the four keeps on reminding us that we are sinners. We know that we are sinners. But our sins have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We know we are, but our sins have been set far apart from us as east is from the west. The word of our testimony is the second thing which makes therefore lose the war. And we, this is when we proclaim the word of Jesus. When we proclaim and live the words of Jesus Christ. When we tell the story of his victory on the cross. This is our testimony. Our testimony in words. Our testimony in deeds. Our testimony in what we say. Our testimony in what people see us doing. Our testimony speaks louder than anything else. And finally, we can defeat him by refusal to love our own lives. That is also in verse number 11. 
whereby him, this is willing to give up our lives to Christ and for Christ. Have you given it to Christ and for Christ? This one can make us overcome the devil. When we not only self-sacrifice, but also sacrifice self. Not only to give what we have, but also we give ourselves. That is what we are told here. This is what can make us win. In conclusion, the devil is very dangerous. But the devil is defeated. To the believers, the devil is not interested with those who do not believe. Because he knows that they are his. He is after the believers. He wants to take the believers. He wants to make you very ineffective, very unproductive. The Bible warns us in verse number 12, and it says this, Because the devil has gone down, he is filled with fully, because he knows that his time is short. He is filled with fully, because he knows his time is short. So, the devil, this time is on lampage. The devil is like a droning man, who, whenever he holds up, hold of you, he can never release you. And he is kicking with anger because he can see his future is about to end. So, believers, we are supposed to be very careful because he is after us. For those who are not believers, we know that we cannot fight the devil alone. Don't try to fight him alone. You may not make it. Because he is strong, we have told, been told about the strength he has. We cannot fight him alone. But when we are in Jesus, he cannot touch us. When we are in Jesus, he cannot touch us. When we are not with Jesus, we are defenseless and we might easily lose the battle. If you stay close to God, we are assured that we shall be victorious. If we stay away from him, we shall be losers. Now, where are you? This morning, where are you? Are you? Are you where Satan wants you to be? Or you are where God wants you to be? In which court are you playing your games? Are you playing your games in God's court? Or you are playing your game in the dragon's court? Who, which father are you serving? Are you serving the Almighty Father in heaven? Or you are fight, serving the Father of all lies. The Almighty Father in heaven or the Father of all lies. You cannot defeat him alone. You need the blood of Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.